from the series Introduction to Medical Device Regulation, Risk Management in the Medical Device Industry in the European Union, a summary of risk management and its life cycle. Welcome to this web-based training. Risk management is defined as the systematic application of management policies, procedures, and practices to the tasks of analyzing, controlling, and monitoring risk, where risk is defined as the combination of the probability of occurrence of harm and the severity of that harm. Risk management is an essential requirement of any medical device lifecycle, encompassing the initial design and development phase and all post-market activities through to decommission and disposal. It is not a static process and requires regular systemic updates. The Medical Device Regulation, MDR, outlines in Article 10.2 that manufacturers are required to establish, document, implement, and maintain a product safety risk management system. The detailed requirements of what the risk management system will cover are listed in Annex 1, Chapter 1-3 of the MDR. In addition to this, the MDR outlines that in the production phase, Manufacturers must evaluate the impact of any new information and, if needed, adjust the risk control measures appropriately. The requirements set out in the MDR are best understood in the context of ISO 14971-2019, Application of Risk Management to Medical Devices. This international standard is accepted as the standard of meeting MDR requirements and outlines in detail risk management for the specific context of medical devices. Before we dive into ISO 14971, we need to further understand some definitions. We have already defined risk management and risk, but there are three other important definitions to understand. These are hazardous situation, which is defined as a circumstance that exposes people, property, or environment to one or more hazards, where a hazard is defined as a potential source of harm, and harm is defined as an injury or damage to the health of people or damage to property or the environment. Risk management aims to minimize potential risks by using a cyclical framework. First, identify hazards, then assess the magnitude of risk posed by the hazard and mitigate all risks that are classified as unacceptable. This process feeds back into itself and continues throughout the entire product life cycle. ISO 14971 shows a good schematic of how to apply this framework, detailing the flow of risk analysis, risk evaluation, risk control, evaluation of residual risk, risk management review, and post-production activities feeding back into the risk analysis to continue the cyclical process. The structure of ISO 14971 in its entirety follows the process flow as shown in this schematic, starting with Chapter 4 which defines the requirements of the risk management plan, while chapters 5 to 10 describe every process in this schematic from top to bottom in depth. Now that we are familiar with the background of risk management, we can dive deeper into each part of the process. When applying the standard, the first thing that you will need to do is to establish and document a risk management plan. The risk management plan defines the scope of the risk management process including, but not limited to, the responsibilities, criteria for risk acceptability, and activities for verification. As the schematic shows, this plan accompanies all the subsequent processes, and therefore its quality is crucial for the overall risk management. Once the risk management plan is established, the step of analyzing risks can begin. The common approach to risk analysis starts with the identification of hazards and hazardous situations. Remembering these definitions from earlier, we can apply them to the context of a medical device. For example, a hazard can be a sterile part of the medical device is contaminated, which may result in the hazardous situation the contaminated part is used on a patient. The associated harm and risk for this hazardous situation must next be estimated. In this example, the harm could be infection or contamination. The occurrence probability and the severity of this harm have to be estimated with respect to the particular medical device, with the support of available information and data. For example, using field data from an equivalent medical device, you estimate that infection, referring to contaminated part used on a patient, occurs approximately 10 times a year and usually requires medical treatment. 
It is not an easy job to cover all the risks in the analysis, especially with consideration of risks arising from different life cycle phases. Systematic methods like failure modes and effects analysis, FMEA, can be helpful at this point. ISO 14971 also lists some examples of hazards in Annex C, which can be used as a reference for a particular risk analysis. It's important to note that ISO 14971 explicitly states that the risk analysis should not only be applied to the intended use. Foreseeable misuses should also be taken into account. The acceptability of each risk will then be evaluated using the criteria for risk acceptability defined in the risk management plan. Here is an example of a risk acceptance matrix. The x-axis is a scale for the severity. The y-axis is a scale for the probability. Both scales have to be defined explicitly for each particular medical device by the manufacturer, as well as the acceptance criteria in the matrix. Using the acceptance matrix, it is easy to identify which scenarios of risk are acceptable and which are not. Looking back to the example, the estimated risk infection that occurs approximately 10 times a year will be classified according to scales for severity and probability. The severity scale here has five levels. 5. Catastrophic, 4. Critical, 3. Serious, 2. Minor, 1. Negligible. According to the description, infection belongs to the severity level serious. The probability scale here also has 5 levels, which are quantitatively defined with mathematical ranges. The probability 10 times a year is greater than the value 10 to the minus 3, and therefore points to a frequent occurrence. In this acceptance matrix, a serious harm that occurs frequently leads to a risk that is not acceptable. The risks have been identified. The next step is to reduce them one by one. Risk control is the step about determining and implementing measures for reducing the risks. Technical standards can usually provide a good source for risk control measures. Although ISO 14971 states that, if the risk is acceptable, it is not required to apply risk control measures. The MDR requires the manufacturer to reduce risk as far as possible in Annex 1, Chapter 1, Article 2. As a manufacturer on the market in the EU needs to meet the requirements of the MDR, risk control measures shall be applied to all risks regardless of their initial acceptability. After risk control measures have been applied, each residual risk has to be estimated and evaluated again. If there are risks evaluated as unacceptable, further risk control measures need to be considered. For conditionally acceptable risk, a benefit risk analysis needs to be performed to determine if the benefits of the intended use outweigh the residual risk. To this point, if there are no residual risks being unacceptable, you might think that there is no further analysis to be done. But what about the sum of these risks? If there are a great number of conditionally acceptable risks, will they accumulate to an unacceptable level? For this reason, the manufacturer shall evaluate the overall residual risk posed by the medical device, taking into account the contributions of all residual risks in relation to the benefits of the intended use. In this example, there is no single risk in the unacceptable area. However, in total, there are 100 critical harms that happen occasionally. Depending on the defined scale, the sum of the probability can possibly accumulate to a higher level, which is no more acceptable. If the overall residual risk of the medical device is not evaluated as acceptable, but the benefits of the intended use outweigh the overall residual risk, it can still be justified as acceptable. This concludes the initial implementation of a risk management plan. Now the manufacturer shall review whether 1. The risk management plan has been appropriately implemented, 2. The overall residual risk is acceptable, and 3. Appropriate methods are in place to collect and review information in the production and post-production phases. The review results are documented in a risk management report at the conclusion of the current risk management. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, risk management is a cyclical framework where post-production activities feed back into the risk analysis. After the completion of the initial risk management process, manufacturers need to continually and actively collect and review information in the production and post-production phases. 
The post-production information provides an opportunity to improve the risk management continuously, in turn reducing the potential risk. Further understanding of how to implement ISO 14971 for your medical device can be found in the technical document ISO TR 2497-2020, Guidance on the Application of ISO 14971. We would like to thank you for your attention and to acknowledge the continuing support of EIT Health and the FAU Innovation Fund. More information on the certificate course Medical Device Regulation offered by the Friedrich Alexander University Erlangen Nuremberg can be found on the homepage of the Central Institute of Medical Engineering at www.simt.fau.eu.